I hereby call to order this committee of the whole meeting for Monday, September 11th, 2023. The time is 321. Will the clerk please call the roll? Aaron Stone. Here. John Cesaretti. Here. Ann Hart. Here. Bonnie Kim. Here. Allison Pathless. Here. Amy Paling. Here. Lisa schneider Fabes. Here. I seek a motion to approve the minutes of the August 14th, 2023 Committee of the Whole Meeting and Executive Session. Motion to approve the minutes of the August 14th, 2023 Committee of the Whole Meeting and Executive Session. May I have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Board members, are there any comments, errors, or omissions to the minutes? All members in favor of approving the minutes say yay. 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 Motion carries. We have no facility development committee items, nor do we have school finance items. So we will move on to strategy, which is Mrs. Schneider Fabes. You should. You are special. We're all, we're well, all special. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Crowe to talk about the strategic committee update. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, our district strategic advisory team held its first meeting of the school year on Thursday, September 7th. Uh, the meeting provided an opportunity of introdu introductions for all team members. Remember that this is a stakeholder group, um, which includes parents and community members, as well as administrators, staff, and teacher representatives. And um, at the first meeting, uh, we had several new team members, which we're always grateful for some new perspectives as we review our um, action steps and so we did introductions and we also um, received some feedback on our strategic plan action steps for this school year so we are here this afternoon to share those proposals with all of you and receive any questions or feedback that you might have um, as we finalize our steps for presentation to the board at the upcoming Board of Education meeting. So we are going to walk through the presentation with some depth today um, and welcome any feedback or questions, whether you have them today or um, in the coming days so that we can finalize that plan. Um, we're really excited about the work that we're doing and um, the work that's ahead of us. So I will allow Katie to give us an introduction and I think, are you sharing from your screen? Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't no, sure about that, okay. but I, I will definitely do that now. Um, I'm just following your lead. I thought this was just a medium session. Um, here we go. So I'm using the slides that we um, use for the strategic advisory team. Um, I wanted to start with sharing the cycle that these action steps go through. Um, I think that was really important context for our new members as well. Um, to understand, you know, what has happened prior because they were new to the district strategic advisory team. So at the end of the year, um, we provided an end of year progress update to the board, really going through all of our different goals and sharing with you our progress at the end of the year. And that was done in May. And then with um, those results, looking at our June all day Ad Council or Administration uh, Council retreat in June, we went ahead and made some adjustments based on the results of that year to the action steps, really reflecting on um, how, how well did our action step um, progress our, our results? You know, what could we do to adjust? If there's areas of adjustment, what needs to continue? And so then in June, we met with the same VSAT team um, for review and feedback, as well as um, at the start of the year with August, our all day at council retreat, um, the administrators reviewed those results as well and made some suggestions and feedback and, and reviewed. Then in September, with our new team assembled for 23-24, um, the DSAC heard uh, the background of our strategic planning process and then we reviewed in smaller groups each of the action steps that went with the goals. We received feedback and now we are here for the Board of Education review and discussion. And then we will again So moving on, um, this slide you will be oh, these are sorry, the rooms. I'm gonna go through that really quickly because these are the same um, presentation slides as DSAC. 
Uh, so this is um, the start of our presentation, our one-page strategic plan with our goal of student achievement and growth and ensuring a differentiated education that provides a strong foundation of rigorous academic learning. Um, we did talk about our KPI. Crystal, yep. do you want to share this? So um, there have been some new regulations around our early screening for dyslexia in, in the state of Illinois. And so we looked at our, we worked with the psychologists and reading specialists this summer to look at what the KPI or the, the early literacy screeners that we were currently using for our kindergarten and first grade, first and second grade students. After reviewing the information that we were using and aligning it with what the new regulations were, we made some changes in what we're gonna be doing for our kindergarten, first and second grade students. So this year is going to be a little bit different in terms of the, the early literacy screeners that we're going to use, um, which means that our KPI is going to change slightly for spring. We just need to see how it all works this fall as we sort of do some new measures with our younger kids that we think is, are going to give us better information about those students and help us identify students who may be at risk for dyslexia or other reading issues. Um, we'll be keeping you up to date as as to how the benchmarking goes in the fall and winter and we will at the um, with DSAT in February I think it's a February meeting finalize kind of what we believe the KPI should be with those changes in the early literacy screeners so just keep you all up to date on where we are um, so these were the um, action steps that we presented as a final draft Actually, the paper copy that you have or the one that was uploaded has some of the adjustments on here that is not reflected on the screen. Um, so what I think, if, if that's okay, what I'm going to do is switch over to this document um, that is reflective of what you have in front of you. So with our goals and strategies and our 23-24 actions, the, uh, none of the key performance indicators change. The strategies do not change. Um, some of the updates for the action steps would be um, the ones that you see, the six that you see in front of you. Um, building on CSS teams will analyze student data after each benchmark period. Um, we wanted to identify MAP and AIMSWeb Plus. We received feedback from DSAT about, you know, what, what about the classroom indicators? And so we added the classroom performance language and identify students who require tier three services, um, intervention or enrichment in either reading or math. Then for the second action step, it would be building MTSS teams to track the progress of students receiving tier three intervention, tier three services for intervention and note those who require lesser in intensive services by next benchmark or end of the year. The third one is building MTSS teams will be provided ongoing training and support throughout the year. And fourth, special education staff, LDSs will be trained in research-based reading and math resources strategies to increase the efficacy of instruction for students with disabilities. For example, the K-4 or Gillingham or and then general education staff will continue to engage in professional learning about research-based reading and math tier one instruction assessment and intervention, including math support and enrichment, reading intervention, and differentiation support. And finally, District 39 teachers will provide explicit instruction for students on the goal setting process in line with students' developmental level and engage all students in the goal setting for any class and or individual goals. feedback about those items. I know that the board has taken the time to review the report over the weekend and um, and has heard quite a bit already about all of these. So we're happy to answer any questions or we can move on to goal two. Uh, as you're thinking, I'll also mention, uh, you know, we have our math support teachers who are supporting this goal as well. Um, not necessarily an action step, but certainly um, in addition that um, will support the success this year. Okay, let's move on to goal two. I'll start with the first one. Um, goal two is, is our, uh, well, 
uh, cultivate a supportive and inclusive learning community that is responsive to the social, emotional, and behavioral needs of our students. And our first action step is a continuation of last year's in that we are going to have each building has a school-based foundations behavior team and they will be participating in eight days of training this year. They are already, every building worked over the summer on um, different strategies and ways to help teach our students how to behave appropriately in an identified common area and they have been implementing since the start of the school year all of the wonderful work they did over the summer. We're pretty excited about continuing this one. All right, uh, so that takes care of the first two uh, action steps. Um, the remainder are really about um, uh, social emotional learning and our integration of DEIB or diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. As you'll recall from the past few years, we've talked a lot about that belonging component. And so we added the B on DEI because um, it just made sense really. And, and um, I think moving forward, that's, um, will continue to be a big focus, especially at 5-8, but beginning in the early um, grades as well. Um, so this year, uh, we're looking at um, continuing with our social emotional curricular resources and that implementation. Um, we did, our SEL team did do a revision of the objectives at each grade level over the summer to make sure that they were really in line with the competencies that we had identified along with that DEIB component. And so um, there were some nuances with language that we included and um, some additional um, objectives that we included and they really um, have been aligned now with our curriculum. However, at 5-8, we have been using responsive classroom uh, lessons for responsive advisory meetings, which they're, um, sort of a curriculum they they fall into areas and they um, have objectives and they're really targeted um, but our teachers were asking for something more aligned and so over the course of last year we identified wayfinder um, which actually has a great focus on belonging um, specifically for sixth through eighth grades and in fifth grade it um, builds that foundation and it really targets things at fifth grade that have been common issues for us like conflict resolution and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, we have uh, three teachers at each grade level piloting that curriculum and we're looking at their input as far as scaling it up um, in the coming year. So that is underway. Um, number four is a new schedule for grades five through eight. Um, as you know, we have had a scheduling committee going on um, from fifth through eighth grade with teacher representation um, across the board. Um, and we are moving into the next phase of that. Um, but one of the must haves that the, that committee identified last year through our work was time set aside for social emotional skill instruction. Um, at Highcrest, we have a daily homeroom that's 18 minutes by the time kids get in and attendance is taken and lunch count is done, it's about 10. Um, and at the junior high, we have one day a week, that's a longer homeroom period, um, which is good, but um, oftentimes that gets taken for assemblies or surveys or other sorts of things that we need to do. So um, that scheduling committee is really looking at how do we do a better job at setting aside that time for that social emotional skill instruction and those conversations that we know are really important, um, both to social emotional and mental health, but also to our academic progress because um, they are tied together. Uh, number five is differentiated professional learning opportunities. So we, uh, after all of our different our professional development, we asked teachers, what do you need more? Um, last year it was really the basics and now we're growing that and looking at how do we embed social emotional learning into our instruction and how do we need to attack that in different ways for our staff. Um, Number six is a reporting system to engage families. So as you'll recall, a couple of years ago, we had a CRC uh, review that was based on social emotional learning and communication with families. And so now that is growing and we're digging into um, really how do we report social emotional skill development to families via report card or some other reporting method. Um, we have had in the past behaviors that promote learning based on second step, which has now been phased out. So um, we need to review those as a committee. 
um, building base MTSS teams will implement aligned processes for Tier 2 and Tier 3 SEL problem solving. That is a result of another summer project, and so we will be doing work with our building teams and then um, uh, and then our schools as a whole um, for SEL problem solving. And finally, build staff capacity for DEIB uh, through professional learning opportunities. And so we're looking at how do we um, not only train staff in um, lessons or sharing that sort of thing, but how do we prepare staff for um, those conversations that might naturally arise as students share about themselves, as students learn about others, and um, do that in a natural and authentic and age-appropriate way. is our professional community focusing mostly on staff, the adults within our schools. And the first... Thank you, sorry, no, oh, about Gold Peak. Do we um, it, For DEIB, is, is the intention to also focus on uh, uh, low-income kids as well? Yeah, socioeconomics is one of those um, diversities that we would look at, for sure. I had a question, you may not be there yet, but for the specific SEL instruction you're trying to create time for on the 5-8 level, are you thinking daily or are you not sure yet? Really best practice would be two to three times a week. Okay, mm -hmm. Okay. thank you. And I'll add, I know the board is aware, but um, our scheduling team will be getting some support this year as well as they try to um, refine their considerations and come to a, a final recommendation. So we're excited about that work that um, is ahead too, so working with some really great people for that. So I, this is not a question so much as uh, acknowledgement and observation. I love talking about those two first goals. Um, I, I'm sure you all have been like me, hearing a lot about the achievement, toxic achievement uh, sort of list of kids from communities like ours for their mental health. So we're talking in goal number one about making sure that we've met high enough and appropriate goals for student achievement. And I, I, I really applaud the way you all have gone about that and are thinking about creating those support services and also being equally mindful at the same time that we are not, and I think about this as a, a board member, we're at the very top of approving what we're expecting of kids and not wanting to set a model that is quite literally never enough. You know, you're in the top. So I, I just am thinking a lot about that, and I think as we are creating these, I'm so grateful for the priority of professional leadership. Thank you for acknowledging that. I, for, for me, I think that's really, really important, and it came out loud and clear on all of our strategic planning feedback sessions uh, with our with our internal teams, with our external stakeholders that both were very, very important and I think it really is something special about WOMED and so staying true to that is, is important to us and so um, thank you for your support of that. All right, so goal three. About balance, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the adults within our school community. Um, the first for our continuation action steps from the last year's plan. But they're valuable and we know that we're gaining the information and um, making progress towards our larger goals as a result of these action steps. And so we want to maintain them. Keeping the district advisory, strategic advisory team operational and kind of that circular feedback of these are ideas, what do you think about it, revise, change, and continue on with new ideas. That process we know is helping us as we make change in our goals. <coughs> we will continue to seek information from staff at key points within their career, whether it's within the 10-year period or shortly thereafter, or even as they leave us either for retirement or for another um, place of employment, getting that feedback to make sure that their experience is reflective of what we're aiming for and changing our practices if we need to. Um, we will continue to make sure that our committees have well-rounded groups of teams. We're hearing from 
different people at different stages within their career, but also to our different disciplines. So we want to know how the ideas that we're talking about, action steps we're creating, are impacting everyone within our school community, and making sure that the communities are made up of those diverse voices and perspectives. Making sure that um, there are opportunities for both staff, faculty, and administrators, all, all of us, uh, to be able to voice what our learning needs are and plan for that accordingly. So those are action steps that we'll be continuing. Areas that we're going to be starting this year is to look at a new survey for um, targeting the needs of our full time time that within our school. So you've heard us talk about five essentials. We are looking at implementing a different survey. You've heard us talk about that. That will happen towards the end of the school year, but our work will start well before that as a committee. We'll be creating a committee to identify known needs and hopefully start setting out a course of action to support that within each of our schools. In addition, we're looking at ways to engage our student services staff on having difficult conversations effectively and being able to facilitate those challenging needs. So we're looking for opportunities for training and um, coaching to support staff in, in those skill sets and an opportunity for parents to come join us next Thursday, Wednesday. Class 39 uh, is kicking off the school year with an ice cream social and we um, engaged with a speaker to come and present on advocating through effective community strategies for student needs, but with tools later um, in that conversation. So that will happen this week, certainly as a starting point. And then continuing our DEIB task force, it wasn't an action step last year, but it was something that we initiated, and so we did it an action step this year. But this task force has a very um, specific focus, which is an end goal of making recommendations for attracting and hiring and retaining Do we want to talk about the surveys as well? Um, it, for goal four? Yes. Yeah. Um, Tony, do you want to kick off goal four first? Yeah, and then, uh, and then I'll talk about, yeah. Sure. So for goal four, you just want me to start and then toward the end you'll? Yeah. OK, sure. So for goal four, we have a uh, majority of our action steps are carryovers. We have one new one, and then we have one that moved down to goal four from a different goal area. So I'll just go ahead and start talking through some of these. Uh, as you know, we were looking at our district and school social media followings. Um, interactions and hoping to increase those um, more by the way of advertising. So Leo Krauss and I went through uh, some social media uh, consulting training on that and uh, have worked through two different venue, uh, ways in which to increase uh, our followers and our interactions uh, through advertising, either by boosting posts, individual posts, or by through advertising campaigns. Both are within the meta platform, seeing that uh, our two most uh, used social media channels by our parents, both last year when we surveyed, and again, because we started to survey on Friday, are still face Facebook and Instagram, both owned by meta. So it makes sense then to focus our advertising that and otherwise. So our uh, uh, making sure kids were registered and enrolled for this school year, capturing not just the parents we know, but also the ones that may not currently be in our system, so those with younger kids. Our parent education events, starting to advertise those. And of course, this year you'll start to see some posts just in general going to any of the residents um, in, the, in our zip code, as well as uh, the area in Glenview that we serve and beyond, so that the taxpayers who fund us feel as if they're getting a great bang for their buck, which they are. We just need to make sure they feel like they are and that others in the North Shore also see that they are. So um, that's part of the reason why we're doing this. And then we might take existing communication um, avenues like the 39 Express and also send it out that way just to be sure that people in the community are capturing this. Anyway, all that to be said, we've um, started doing that and you'll see a lot more of that um, as you're looking through your feeds or 
Instagram Reels or whatever, it'll show up there. The second action step we have is to, uh, which we're continuing, is to the redesign process for the district and school websites and the streamline in information to those. Um, we kind of did a soft launch with some of the templates. Uh, they're still getting worked on. There's still more work to do. However, uh, what you may find now if you go to our district website or school websites is a little bit cleaner look. Uh, the quick links in the upper right hand corner uh, were not just randomly placed there. We looked at uh, Google Analytics on our previous sites. What are people reaching most? Um, we met, uh, Leo and I met with uh, the webmasters from the PTA's nose to find out what our parents uh, seem to be uh, searching for the most. Um, just to let you know, that's the lunch menu. <laughs> uh, that came through very loud and clear, uh, which is, you know, things we think are valuable. I, I will tell you right now, overwhelmingly, as we met with them individually, the lunch menu is a thing out there. So obviously, if that's a thing, and, and that's where people are, why people are getting drawn to that, we need to make sure that the link to that is prominently displayed. And then, like, there's a little button there for jobs, because as positions become harder and harder to fill, we want to make sure that not only is it not buried, but it's also called something different. So instead of employment, it's just jobs. You go to uh, any other place, that's what sometimes people are looking for. Um, so there might be some change in the, in the language. Um, there's an accessibility widget. We pared down the headings. We reorganized some of the headings. The content work is still in progress, so meeting with the schools and the district departments to kind of peel back. We've already archived off some information. Anyway, that work is being done. So if you haven't checked in a while, please do. There's still some things that, that are in progress. Third action step, um, it was added in June, but implemented in August. So this was, uh, before you knew it, it was here, and, and uh, now it's completed. So uh, there was, it, it came through that we needed some kind of online newsletter tool for our staff um, just to help them and have some consistency for our families, give our staff, our teachers, some analytics themselves. And in looking at some of those tools that are ed education centric like Canva or S'more or looking at more of the corporate level like MailChimp or Constant Contact, um, we learned that a lot of our teachers were already using S'more. The ease of use and um, the training component, component is just not uh, really needed, and it does give analytics. And um, so we just, rather than wait until halfway through the year when our staff were already um, used to using one type of tool, we just decided to do it. And um, so after doing some research, we did it. It's, it's uh, been an overwhelming success, uh, not just from our teachers, um, but also from our parents. We have heard from our parents that it's been really nice. The, the online newsletters feel a little more interactive. Our teachers can post videos. Our teachers know what people are clicking on. They can be embedded into emails. So if your child's teacher sends a different type of uh, newsletter this year, that's the reason why. So that's open for any staff member in the district. Uh, we're using smarter. The fourth item. Um, is our transition. So you know that we've worked on uh, transition planning from fourth to fifth grade in a previous year, and then now it's our time. And, and some adjustments were made for the sixth to seventh year, some tours, student ambassadors, making sure it, that now is continuing. So I know uh, Kate and with support of uh, Kelly as well have, have really focused on some of the great things that have been happening in that fourth to fifth grade bringing that to the sixth to seventh grade transition. So, um, and then I'll just um, mention one more and then maybe Kelly can jump into anything related to transitioning and uh, transition planning and that last bullet point action step as well. Uh, the fifth one is the academic pathway. So that, uh, the deliverable on that is, is a document, but I think it's a document that we know, the reason why it landed here is, is it's a needed document. So something that shows our parents that our courses connect, not just within our system, but possibly even with Nutria. So not that we have as many options as Nutria does, but it, it has been difficult at times for some of our parents to track why they've been, or their child's been placed in a certain class. So. Um, they, they're, so it's clarifying for our parents, putting it into a document that would live on the website. So 
um, that one should be pretty easy to complete, uh, is in progress and sh should see that shortly. So I'll turn it over to Kelly, who's our uh, other gold champion for Gold Four. Yeah, and just going back to number four with the uh, using parent surveys and feedback, we shared this with our um, team at DSAT um, and also talked about how a fourth to fifth grade survey was going out. We had a long discussion just about the amount of surveys and um, it kind of referenced back up to goal two where we were um, talking about um, some of our KPIs that involve surveys. So there's the five essentials originally that now we will be giving um, CSCI to students instead of five essentials. So those KPIs will have to adjust. Um, and then also a survey that we gave to teachers last year that we'll have to do again, a, a, um, a, a strategic plan survey where we coupled some of Heather's target areas with um, some of the goal two areas as well with their understanding of how to implement um, social emotional learning. So um, along the way, um, just the, the amount of surveys and tallying surveys came up as a concern from a community member who was, you know, like, hey, this, this is a lot. And it's actually a lot of work for you guys. So um, we will be thinking of like, is there, are there better ways to do some of this? So maybe moving forward after this year, maybe we have instead of surveys for the transition, we do focus groups or something that's a little, um, less survey focused um, and and maybe there's a different way to gather information um, or maybe it's consolidated for some of the CSCI um, for parents and, and students and staff so that we don't need to give multiple surveys asking the same questions. So um, we'll be kind of looking at that. It's not an action step, but it's something in the back of our mind as we move on. However, it could evolve into an action step under goal four, possibly for you know part of this year and maybe even next year. It might be a good one for us to take on in a larger scale because survey fatigue is very real. And we all want to consume data for purposes such as this, but um, what it's doing on our parents, what it's doing on our teachers, um, are we getting a true sampling as Kelly alluded to with a focus group, or are we just hearing the ones that really love it or the ones that really hate it? Like what? Because when we do a communication survey, like we did for the communications plan, we found out that overwhelmingly the, the, our parents think we're doing a great job communicating. So, you know, it's like, so yeah, it makes you wonder, um, are we capturing a true sample of, of what we're doing? But what Kelly's alluding to, the, the survey fatigue, it's a real thing that we need to take on in, just in general. Yeah, so we'll be looking for opportunities to consolidate some of that moving forward. Um, the sixth one on here relates to goal two um, about increasing parent and community uh, communication about our commitment to DEIB. Um, you know that for many years we've had a statement of inclusion. We put it in our handbooks. We put it on our website. Um, but um, we were noticing that people either don't know where to find it or don't know about it and um, getting a lot of conversation about that. Um, also, as it connects to um, social emotional learning, um, what what do these competencies mean? What does DEIB mean? How is that addressed in the classroom and so on and so forth? So um, this is a goal of ours um, in this area because this goal is parent um, and family communication, basically. Um, goal two is more about teachers and students. So they work together. Um, and in, if you have attended curriculum night, um, you'll see teachers are passing out our SEL objectives. We're talking more about it. Um, we've included information in our administrator um, openings. And so we're really making a conscious effort to increase that communication and knowledge for everybody. Are there any questions on goal four that Kelly or I can answer? is going to touch on goal five then. Yep, goal five uh, focuses stewardship of resources. The action steps for goal five um, are, are very similar to what we've seen in prior years. Um, now that we're in the middle of this you know, five-year plan, um, at least at least the rates to number one, the review, our twice a year review of our five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, being in the middle now, if we look at the back half of whatever that plan might be. Um, 
you know, as we get past the winter break and into the, the late winter and, and into the spring for sure, we'll start to want to have some conversations about what kind of project priorities might be for the back half of this plan. Um, then the other thing is step two, continuing to review plan, prioritize those smaller uh, school based projects that we try to fit within our within our summer schedule. Um, the one challenge that we routinely see with these smaller projects that we really want to get done is how do they fit in with that bigger construction schedule and then that summer building years. Step three, um, as always, we're going to continue to monitor legislative adjustments out of Springfield that touches on a wide variety of areas, anything from property taxes, pension cost shifts, it could be legislation from last year that we saw with the um, mandating all day kindergarten starting in 27 28 that was signed by the governor over the summer so taking all those things and then rolling that into our five-year projections on an annual basis and then the last item is just implementing a process to evaluate the class size and staffing patterns across non-home rooms at the 5 8 level so that is uh, goal five and we're happy to answer any questions questions about I will uh, just say to our team thank you for being succinct and uh, trying to review that and, and for the community who might be listening I know that the board has spent a lot of time hearing these updates and responding to um, our plans so the lack of questions hopefully reflects that uh, the board is is feeling as though they're well informed about uh, what's being presented today but we are happy to make any refinement to any of these action steps uh, if there is any feedback before we present again at the board of education for final approval <laughs> well it's interesting that you say that we actually <laughs> made a, a strong effort this year to be really focused in our goals uh, we found that last year's action steps um, were so verbose that uh, there were times where we felt like maybe we uh, took on too much or we weren't really clear about what we were trying to accomplish so this year all summer long we really spent some time digging into what are we actually trying to do and how will we know if we accomplish it um, so we hope that um, while it sounds like a whole lot that we're tackling and it feels like that as well we're really focused in uh, making this third year of our strategic plan a really powerful and meaningful one for us. So, okay. Mrs. Okay. Schneider Fabes, are we done with strategy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to say I appreciate that reflective process that you just went through. That's um, going to be really impactful, I think. All right, this is an opportunity for the public to address the board. Are there any community members that um, are present who wish to speak? Okay, seeing none, we will continue with the agenda. Is there any old business? I think I have one question on behalf of me and Bonnie. So this summer you had said that the McKenzie Playground was gonna get whatever, a ribbon cut or something and um, you'd asked for a couple board members to go and Bonnie and I, since we are the two former McKenzie moms that are on the board, we were maybe going to, not maybe, but we were planning on tapping into the younger versions of ourselves and showing up on the playground. Um, do you know when that is? <laughs> Let me confirm. And okay. Get those, that okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Um, any other old business? Any new business? Right. Having no further business, we need a motion to adjourn the committee of the whole meeting. Motion to adjourn the committee of the whole meeting. May I have a second? Second. Motion having been made and seconded. All those in favor of adjournment, please indicate by saying yay. Yay. Motion carries by general consent, and the time is four o'clock. We are adjourned.